Okay, so now we're ready to go. All right, so first thing we'll look at is we're going to talk about um, some definitions of using operations with functions. It's mostly just a notation type thing. So if you see this sort of thing, f plus g of x is how that's read, okay? So it's not just f of x or g of x, it's f plus g of x. What that means is, is that if you have these two different functions, f of x and g of x, this particular function would be just the addition of those two. Okay, so it equals f of x plus g of x. Okay, we'll do some examples in a minute. Um, similarly, uh, you can do any other operation. So by operation, I mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You can do any of that. Just like you do with numbers, you can do it all with functions as well. And each one has its own kind of unique notation here. So f minus g of x is what you would expect. It's f of x minus g of x. So you take your two functions and subtract what you have. Uh, there's fg of x, okay, which implies a multiplication, so that would be f of x times g of x. And then the division, we got to be a little bit careful because um, it, it depends. Because when we start dividing things, then we have problems if we divide by zero. So, but f over g of x would be the same thing as taking f of x and dividing it by g of x. But we have to put a little caveat on here and just provided that g of x doesn't equal zero. Okay, so for that one, what we might have to end up doing is to actually have a new function, f divided by g of x, we're going to have to restructure what the domain is. So f of x and g of x might have domains that are negative infinity to infinity, everything's happy, but then if we take one and put it over the other one, suddenly we're in the situation now of, oh, i got to check that denominator and make sure that denominator never equals zero. So i got to figure out what x values in g would make that thing go to zero because now I can't use those numbers anymore. Does that make sense? Because when we divide, we can't divide by zero, so whatever is underneath there, we got to be careful we don't have something that equals zero. Okay? So, uh, let's quickly practice this, and then I, re I really want to focus on compositions for the most part today, so we'll just spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, but let's say we've got f of x equals x squared plus 3 and g of x is equal to x minus 5. Those are our two functions we're going to use. So let's see if we can go through and do each one of these operations like we just listed up there. Okay, and then write out a new formula for each one that's as simplified as we can get it. Okay, so f plus g of x. Okay, would be taking those two functions and adding them together. Any like terms, put them together. And that's pretty much it. So, can anybody give me the uh, answer to f plus g of x then? Yes, sir. x squared plus x minus 2. x squared plus x minus 2. Yeah, exactly. All right, so if we can do that, you can certainly do this. What's f minus g of x? Yeah, go ahead. x squared minus x plus 8. Good, because we're going to subtract the x and we're going to subtract the negative 5, right? So subtracting the negative 5 is going to make it a plus 5. So 3 plus 5 is 8. So we got to have a plus 8. Yeah, good. Um, okay, 
How about fg of x? So this one, uh, when it comes to the multiplication, I'm going to be not so much a, like a hard nose on you have to foil it all out and all that. The back of the book, when you check your answers, will do that. They'll actually multiply it all together. So for this one, though, if you wanted to just leave it x squared plus 3 multiplied by x minus 5, that's okay. All right, though, technically... If it were all multiplied together, let's see if I can do all the math in my head here. x to the third minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 15 is what you'd have. Okay, but I'll take either. It's fine. Um, okay, and then f over g of x. Um, Making the formulas pretty straightforward, just like the last one, we're just going to put f of x over g of x. So x squared plus 3 over x minus 5 would be the formula then. All right, and so one thing they're going to have you doing with all of these is double-checking the domain. Okay, so does the domain stay the same? Does it change? Um, and we can kind of inspect each one of these new formulas one at a time and, and just ask ourselves what, what would be the domain for that then, okay? So the f plus g of x, what do you suppose should be the domain for that? It's x squared plus x minus 2. Yeah, everything still works, right? Negative infinity to infinity. Okay, uh, what about the next one? Somebody who has not spoken yet today. Answer me this, what's the domain? Yes, sir. Right, yep, again, nothing wrong, right? There's no dividing, there's no log, there's no square root, so everything still works. Okay, what about the multiplication? Somebody else who has not chimed in yet. What should be the domain for that? So x to the third minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 15. That you've already answered, so somebody else. Yeah, go ahead. You got it. Again, nothing, nothing going on that's bad, right? No dividing, no square roots, no logs. Yeah, so it's still everything. It's only when we get to this last one, right, where things are going to have to change a little bit. So what should be the domain, or at least what should we exclude from the domain in the last one? Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So we, we can't include the 5, so our domain is going to be negative infinity to 5. Don't forget the union, 5 to infinity. Okay, and that's pretty much it with, with the operation stuff, okay? Um, it's just adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing formulas together, and then double-checking what's the domain when you're done. That's really the process for that. Um, okay, so compositions. Anybody remember from Algebra 2 what a composition of functions is? Yeah, it's where you put one function into another. Like f of g of x and g of f of x. You guys remember those? Okay. So we're, what we're going to do with these is we'll uh, actually putting functions together that way and then also uh, evaluating them and um, checking domains for those as well. So, I'll do a quick little definition for this, because there's some notation stuff with this as well. Uh, 
Okay, so it gets written this way, and that little O in the middle there is of. So f of g of x, that's the same thing as this. Which I think is the notation you guys are probably a little more familiar with. f of g of x. And I happen to like the second way better as well, because you can literally see what you have to do. This right here, you're going to take g of x and substitute it into f. And it's even written that way. you got parentheses with g of x in there. Okay. All right, and it can, it, can be, it can go the other way too. g of f of x, you can do the same thing, but the notation works this way. Okay, so let's say we've got, and I'm going to use some different variables just to keep you guys honest here. So let's say I've got r of x, okay? And r of x is x minus 1, and maybe we do... Oh, v of x is, I don't know, square root of x plus 4, let's say. Let's do some composition work with those two. Okay, so if I do r of v of x... So that means it's going to be r of v of x. So v is going into r. Okay? So maybe we'll just write that underneath. V. Can you write it Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If, when you're working on it, if you want to just change the notation so it makes more sense, that's totally fine. Okay, so v is going to go into r. And specifically, what that means is the whole, entire function v, so that square root of x plus 4, the entire thing is going to be substituted in for x in the first one, in the r function. Okay, So we're going to write out this r of x function, but as soon as we see this x, replace it by this entire function. Okay, So this is going to be the square root of x plus 4 minus 1. And if we so chose, we could go the other way with it too, right? So, whoops, I don't need the or. It's v of r of x. So in this case, we're going r into v. So I take the entire r function, pick it up, drop it into v where the x is. Okay? So we'd have the square root of... Now, not just x, but x minus 1. So x minus 1, and then we still got that plus 4. Okay, and so this one we can actually simplify up just a little bit. So we end up with the square root of x plus 3 is that composition. Okay, so do we feel comfortable with just the putting it together part of this? doing composition. Did I lose anybody there? You did it backwards? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so what I'd like to do next is